Since, since no one's doing rounds, you don't have to do five teams tonight. That is true. You could do four. That is true. Then I have to wonder which of these wonderful categories it took hours to create. I'm going to have to drop. I don't know. No, you could still do the categories. Yeah, you can still do all five categories because yeah, four teams. Which is less teams? Or are you 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 going to join teams like Susan does? So. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. committed to symmetry. That makes sense. That's right. It doesn't have to be five. Yeah. There you go. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if that's going to break the spreadsheet. <laughs> Probably it'll be okay. Yeah, I think it'll be you okay. can always create a team null. That's <laughs> yeah, a, fake, a fake team. With yeah. Random team, score. team Trump and give it all zeros. I'll, I'll have yeah. you know, I'll have Siri <laughs> randomize and see if it beats any of you. Team Trump and give it all zeros. Ooh, I like that. That's funny. Yeah, push yeah. your questions in the chat, GPT. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. By the way, I, I will tell you when, but I use chat GPT for one of my rounds. Only Put one next to the oh, game. Only one. Only one. All right, we'll have to guess which one. What? what? No, I'll tell you. Team. I'll tell you when we get there. Oh, okay. Put a fake team and put like Donald Trump on it and uh, <laughs> Giuliani. Yeah, 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 a bunch of, a bunch of uh, you know, a bunch of funny names. Yeah, uh, the Kraken, as in really stuff. Bigfoot. So where is everybody tonight? I think Susan's having a private game. <laughs> I know Faith and Romero are, are just on the about to head home. So I don't think they said they'll try and come, but they may not be able to make it. And I know where my brother's <laughs> hiding. Hi, Gail. Hi. Hey Gail. You know you're no know you're on for next week, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your hat is making me nervous because you're in a tiny little <laughs> square. I can't read it, and it looks red. And it looks like it might say something. It's not there. red. It's blue. It's blue. Nope. Ah, there we go. That's, that's uh, right. Rob colorblind Rob. That's me colorblind. Hey, yeah, that's right. Michael Rogers, again. Okay. That's the oh, good important. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I uh, not is that a custom job? One, is that a custom job? It, I found it. <laughs> it was uh, a an anti-Trump organization that has merch including this well, what, else, what else did they have uh lots of stuff Lock i got a, cup, oh, a coffee mug also that i didn't bring today i should have brought it i'll bring it next time it says i'm happy when i wake up in the morning and trump isn't president <laughs> i wanted one that said make america great again but great is g-r-a-t-e <laughs> <laughs> now it is the colorblind is sad because it's important that it's blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was surprised Kool Aid <laughs> didn't do something like make America grape again. Uh. <laughs> so, so Rob, That's clever. That's really clever. How do you know or, who's going to live or die in the old Star Trek? The the colors are discreet enough so that okay. I can tell. No, so interesting when Gail had the hat on. Because of the lighting or something, it looked the same color. Is your shirt red? Is your is your blouse red? No, it's red. It, yeah, it's red. Okay. Not, not, doesn't look anything like the hat. Okay, yeah, the well, hat it, it nothing does, like it, the shirt. It no does matter to what the me, but only wow. when, bright only, red, and the hat is navy blue. Only when you have so so color is very oh. very dependent upon lighting conditions and also other things, including some of the well, And it's particularly interesting because the most common color blindness is red green. Yeah, that's what I have. And it's blue yellow. That's what I have. Red blue usually Every, isn't a problem for people. Every, everything gets messed up because red doesn't look like red. So, but anyway, when you had the hat on, it looked the same because it's in the same light spectrum, maybe yes. as your as your blouse. But when you took it and you brought it forward, it definitely looked blue. <clears throat> it still looks the same, huh? Uh, yeah. it's, really, it's really different. Yeah. So, so what well, color? What color is the so one behind my, uh, Kevin? What was that? The, the the one behind Kevin. What color is that hat? Well, that that's definitely red. Oh, okay. Yeah, he ketchup's cheated. a good hit. Ketchup. But, yeah. <laughs> I have red green deficiency, but I, I think you have a something stronger, maybe Rob. Like I feel like I see things you don't see. Maybe. Well, like I said, it's like, all right, everyone's monitors slightly, and I might have tweaked the colors on my monitor, so maybe mm, that true. messed me up to with Gail. It, it's hard to know, because color is just not, it's not so discreet as people think. Oh, clearly you should see that as this. There's a lot of factors that, that contribute to how someone or anyone sees something in color. 
Yep. So, you, so you never watched the Red Green Show, huh? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Good Canadian, Canadian, good Canadian comedy. Actually, thing. Yeah. Every tool can be the right tool. Yes. Red Green is awesome. And duct tape fixes fixes everything. Yep. Hey. Handyman secret weapon duct tape. Yep. Yeah. Classic show. Although Classic admittedly, show. very funny. If duct tape. You need more than just duct tape. You also need WD-40. True, true. If it's supposed to move and doesn't, you use WD-40. If it moves and not supposed to move, you use duct tape. <laughs> okay, so is anybody leaving early today besides Carolyn? It's always Carolyn. I don't know. I might. We'll have to see how I'm feeling. Because I've been up. I was up really early this morning. So we'll see how I'll go. I'm going to try and make it. Depends on how fast you are, Susan Gerbic, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't know I'll, I'll try to make it but i yeah I, again i had a thing this morning i never really was able to get a nap in so mm. i'll but I'll, I'll be what, honest I'll what was that. your thing <clears throat> oh i had breakfast with some of the people in the graduating class they do it the first thursday of they do something the first thursday of every month of this went to the reunion last month I, I thought this would be fun. And it was. It was cool. All right. Too many mimosas. All right. Let me make the rooms up now. And we'll have to put people in later. Let's see. Yeah, I've, I've had a stressful week and a half because my puppy has been sick and we didn't know why. Mm. So good did news they, is did they figure it out. They're they're guessing at this point. They ran a crap load of tests, took x-rays. And everything's fine. They thought Addison's disease, and oh. it turned out not. So her cortisol levels were really low, but then gastrointestinal upset can also cause that. So, but it was enough of a thing for them to run the cortisol test. So she's been at the bed a lot the last week. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they, they figure that she probably just was a stupid dog and ate something that uh -huh. the magpies uh -huh. dropped in the backyard and caused her to be very sick for a week. Okay. She right. lost Let's three see. pounds. Rooms. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, and she's little. That's significant. For yeah, she's time. twenty-eight pounds, so yeah. she lost three pounds. <laughs> oh. Okay, we got rooms. Susan Eric is not inviting you. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh... Rob, I first read that is Susan Gerbic is not inviting you to join room one. <laughs> I'm like, oh wait, Susan Gerbic not is inviting you to join room one. <laughs> All right, so I got to do what she always does and write the names in here quickly. Not so quickly.
Ooh, Jamie's here. Uh, okay. Morning. What happened? Did Jamie disappear? No, yeah, he's here. Yeah. I'm just saying hello to Jamie. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> good evening. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful morning here. It's really okay. nice. Is it a beautiful day in the neighborhood? Beautiful yeah, tomorrow will be a tomorrow will be a very nice day for all of you. Yay. <laughs> The date is seven six. The game is one six seven. Season four, episode four. Yes, in fact, it is. Very it must job. mean nothing. Somebody's keeping track. Very good. Keep going. You had a cadence. <laughs> well, no, it was just weird because they had six seven and one seven six and one sixty seven, and then the season and episode are, are both four. Okay. Yes. As Bob just mentioned season four, game 167. So, okay, team names. What do we have for team one? Adrian, Ben, Jordan, and Gail. And you're muted, Ben. You want to say our team name? Yeah. Bernard and the Woolly Mammoths. Okay. <laughs> Type it in the chat. Thank you. You're welcome. Sounds like a 60s band. I agree. That's what I said, too. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. Team two, Bob, Jamie, Jane, and Kyle. Oops, hold on. Fight record high temperatures. Switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius. That'll do yes. it. <laughs> Global warming fall. <laughs> Why didn't they think of that? Mm -hmm. Team that sounds three. like an idea Congress would have. Yeah. If, if, you know, if you want to lose, you want to lose weight, you can do something. Marjorie funny. Taylor Green is going to propose to up, and then she'll fight with Bobert. You bitch! I thought of that. Bill, <laughs> Carolyn, Lee, and Ron. How low can you go, MTG? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think I bounced from something today. <laughs> Free, freedom yeah, caucus. caucus. Is that Magic the Gathering? I mean, how, how bad do you have to be to get kicked out of there? I mean, come on. All right, Karen. Oh, Carl, I see. Kevin. Our name is anything but KKK. Oh, I was oh. thinking that when I saw how it worked out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we are playing with four teams because everyone apparently is following Susan around at the Magic Castle or something. <laughs> oh, I hope they chirp in during the night. So team one is Bernard and the Woolly Mammoths. Team two is a fight record high temperature switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius or centigrade. Is it centigrade? I'm confused about that. Celsius. Kelvin. Celsius. That's great. They used to call it the old days. Yeah, that's what they used to call it. Yeah. How low can you go, MTG? And four is our name is anything but KKK for Karen, Carl, and Kevin. Okay. And we have a mystery team name for team number five, which uh, I will. Let Trump you know is a chump. Cluster. Today's word. <laughs> okay. So here Perfuffle. we go. The uh, first round of the evening is in uh, the one on, the, on your upper left, which is uh, my CD collection there. So this is going to be um, country western song names. I don't believe anyone's ever done this before. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't believe Paul is not here because Paul. Oh, no. If you can do this, I'm doing sports next time. So, <laughs> so what you're going to do is select the actual song title by the named artist out of the five I'm giving you. So I'm, I'm yeah. all multiple choice. So oh, I'm not yay. Make you... Thank you. Yeah. So you got four fake ones. and That is correct. And this is where okay. I, I use ChatGPT. I, I gave it the oh, name really? and I said, ChatGPT, come up with a country western song name that's kind of like this. And uh, yeah, I tweaked some of them, but uh, it's probably 90% yeah, yeah, yeah. what ChatGPT gave me. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to say something in, in response to what Ron asked earlier, how it went with Celia's category last 
yes. uh, week, Ron, it went well, thank you. But she <laughs> made up an answer for the list of uh, musicians and one of them ended up being a real name. She thought oh, yeah. she did not. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she mentioned that yeah. in the follow-up on that one. That yeah. Funny. Too clever for her own good. Oh, you gotta go search your fake answers. So so <laughs> that's correct. So with that in my mind, by the way, Karen, when I did this, I said, How do I know one of these is not a real song? So I initially was just going to say, um, which of these is not a song, right? Or which of these, which of these five is the real song? But then people would Google it and I would probably have the same problem. So what I said, you'll see it as here we go. Number one is this particular artist song. So I, you know, I, I look at his collection and he never made it. Somebody else might have sang a song with this title. But this Very, good. I did not. Very good. Very good. All right. So number one. That's how to do that. Is Toby Keith from uh, 2003, the actual song. Rum for all, whiskey for my hound dogs, tequila for my girls, beer for my horses, bourbon for my brothers one of those isn't his actual song title but one are, is an actual one is an actual song title oh select the actual song title by the named artist out of the five given yes mm -hmm. the rest are either chat gpt or me or some combination thereof number two kenny chesney 1999. And by the way, the actual songs in all of these are not like, um, you know, unknown songs for the artist. They're like big hits for the artist. Uh, Kenny Chesney, 1999. She thinks my tractor's sexy. He thinks my tan sexy. She thinks my brother's sexy. He thinks my sister's sexy. She thinks my rocket's sexy. And I'm, I'm going to ask somebody else to read number three because I'm still suffering with a sore throat and cough. And, and this is a lot of words here. So who volunteers to rank, read this one? Karen does. Karen. All right, here you go, Karen. Each of these is quite a long title. Here you go. Holy moly. Oh, okay. Trent Williams, 2004. Go for it, Karen. Select the actual song title by the named artist of the five given. A, Billy Joe's Truck Stop Diner Motel Pawn Shop Gas Station Dance Hall Tattoo Parlor. B, Dixie Rose Deluxe's Honky Tonk Feed Store, Gun Shop Used Car, Beer Bait Barbecue, Barbershop Laundromat. C, Sally Ann's Saloon, Western Wear, Boot Shop, Horse Stable, Line da Dancing, Mechanical Bull, BBQ, BBQ Joint. D, Hank's Hardware Farm Supply, Livestock Auction, Country Music Store, Ice Cream Parlor, Fiddle Lessons, Fiddle Lessons. Just one Fiddle Lessons. E. Ruby's Roadhouse, Pool Hall, Bowling Alley, Bowling Pro Shop, uh, Karaoke, Burgers, Arcade, Tanning Salon. <laughs> Excellent job. Excellent job, Karen. Okay. Number four. This is a short, so I think I can read this. Hank Williams Jr., way back in 1988. Trucking down the old Southern back road, whiskey runs deep in my Kentucky veins. If the South would have won, outlaw, heart, rebel soul, raised hell, never back down. Number five, Jamie O'Neill, 2004. Chasing whiskey and wishing wells, lost in the desert of a cowboy's heart, searching for gold in a ghost town, trying to find Atlantis, riding the dusty trail to El Dorado. Number six, Trace Atkins, 2005. Honky tonk, but donkey donk. <laughs> Dancing in the moonlight, but donkey donk delight. Neon lights and but donkey donk nights. Barroom queen with a but donkey donk swing. But donkey donk rebels and whiskey fueled nights. By the way, most all of the ones that are the actual songs on these, we do country western dances to. Sometimes choreograph specifically to those mm -hmm. songs. Number seven, Joe Nichols, 2005. Moonshine magic unleashes her wild side. Whiskey's spell frees her demons. Tequila makes her clothes fall off. Sip and shine <laughs> and shedding layers. Mudslide mischief and wardrobe malfunctions. 
<laughs> Bob likes that was. one. Yeah. Number eight. The Dean Brothers, 1996. My baby thinks he's a bull. My baby thinks she's a train. My baby thinks he's a rocket. My baby thinks she's a queen. My baby thinks he's a wolf. Number nine, the shortest cat, uh, titles. Brad Paisley. I don't know if I spelled Paisley right. 2007. Butterflies, ladybugs, dragonflies, fleas, protects. <laughs> Yes, there is a song named after insects. And number 10, Gretchen Wilson, 2004. Rodeo queen, redneck woman, hillbilly princess, trashy lady, or local yokel. Okay, Any questions? Yes. Okay. Go to your rooms. All right, so number one. Just kidding, Susan. Was beer for my horses. Number two, was she thinks my tractor sexy. Number B, oh my God. Dixie Rose Deluxe is honky tonk, feed store, gun shop, used car, beer, bait, barbecue, barber shop, laundromat. Number four, if the South would have won. Number five, trying mm -hmm. to find Atlantis. Number six, mm -hmm. honky tonk, badonky donk. Number seven, tequila makes her clothes fall off. Number eight, my baby thinks she's a train. And number nine, ticks of all things. And number 10, red neck woman. There we go. Okay, back to the score sheet. Can you all see the score sheet? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, Bernard and the Woolly Mammoths, how'd you do? You got a two out of 10. No. <laughs> yes. And I apologize for talking my I team. I have great respect some of the for you, so you know. <laughs> Every, That's two more than I would have gotten. You really want you, to You could kind of be proud of that score, though. That's one more than I would have had. <laughs> All right. Team two, flight, flight record high temperature switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius. This is astounding. We got eight. Yeah. Wow. 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 Eight. Not, not a lighthouse. <laughs> All right. How long can you go, MTG? How low can you go? Five. Not bad. Our name is anything but KKK. H. Thank you, yeah. Kevin's wife. Very good. Yep. <laughs> and Susan, Susan, how'd you do? Susan's on her own. Uh, I'm not hearing anything. Susan got zero. <laughs> Let's go. <continue. Yeah. laughs> All right. So we have a nice spread there. Give her one. She would have got Badonka Donk. <laughs> yeah, just because of the weird name, huh? <laughs> The, the downside of putting zeros in that last team slot is it's going to screw up the yeah the yeah. average. Yeah. Now you know you know it's it's it was ten multiple choice. So what what would the random? <clears throat> should got two three two point yeah. five or something like that. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So you all did much better than that. If you right? just pick A for every one, what would she have got? Yeah, two, one uh, twenty percent chance. Yeah. yeah. So give her two points. <laughs> so almost every did everyone did better than just pure guessing so that was good some people significantly better all right we're gonna go for let's see let me get my chat back up here because my chat is gone and we're going to go round two and i need a team rob you need a team well mm -hmm. i think let's see uh, team two points Team yeah, one. we get our. What team had two points? Uh, team, team one. one. Team one. Mammoth. Team, team Mammoth. Ron, team yes. one, yeah. Yay, Deborah. Yes, please. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the next category is going to be. Deborah, do you know country music? <laughs> I think I might have gotten the ticks one. Well, that would have been one more than we got. One that more than so we got. That was so funny. When I, was like, <laughs> I forgot what team it was. That can't be a song about ticks. So I'll exclude that, that one. Right? Right? <laughs> That's and the only song I And that. the other one was, oh, uh, no, I know Rob made up that thing about Atlantis. Uh -huh. Take that one out. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. No, I'd heard the tick song oh, yeah. a few times, but I don't think I've heard the other ones. <laughs> okay. I so saw a video that had Willie Nelson in it, but I don't know what that was. That was fine. I heard right, so the Keith one. This is quite different. Um, this is a sp space travel. I have done space travel. This is more space travel. 
Just give me the answers to these space flight, space flight questions. Do you want anyone muted? Yeah, we'll see if they're bad. We're well answers. behaved so far. So far. <laughs> Number one, everyone knows, haha, I would like to say, that 12 humans have walked on the moon. But how many people have traveled beyond low Earth orbit? I'm going to give you plus or minus two. Number two. Is the plus or minus two on what we consider the orbit or the people? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Oh, my God. Somebody read this. Radius. Carl, read this. Oh. In, 19, in 1945, this science fiction author published extraterrestrial <laughs> relays. Can, can rocket science stations give worldwide radio coverage where three manned space stations were envisioned to be arranged in, arranged in a triangle in Earth orbit to provide worldwide communication? The idea of placing satellites in geostationary orbit for Earth observation purposes was first proposed in 1929 German language book by Hermann Potsnick, and this was cited in the 1945 oh. paper. If it wasn't clear there, the question is about the science fiction author. Oh, okay. The rest of it is extra information to perhaps help or not. Or confuse. So or who confused. is this? Who is the author is That's what you're correct. asking. That okay. is correct. Number three, <clears throat> the last space shuttle launch occurred on July 8th. 2011. Wow, that's a long time ago. With mission STS-135, name the final orbiter launched in the Space Transportation System program. And please don't say Challenger. <laughs> Number four. <clears throat> this was America's first space station launched in 1973 on the last Saturn V rocket that orbited Earth for six whole years. Number five, I'm going to probably mispronounce this. Taiyang Gong is the name of the Chinese space station, which had its first module launched on 29th of April, 21. What does the name translate to English? Number six. In December 72, this astronaut became the 11th of 12 human beings to walk on the moon. He has been called last human on the moon. Number seven. What was the name of the first spacecraft to visit Pluto? And that happened in 2015, not that long ago. I'm going to ask Carl to read this long one again so I don't irritate my throat. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. The Deidre spacecraft carried the golden records, which includes a 100-plus digital image, a variety of natural sounds, music selections, human sound-like footprints and laughter and spoken greetings in 55 ancient and modern languages, including a six-year-old child saying hello from the children of planet Earth in English. Name this child whose voice may well outlast us all of humanity. By the way, they went on to author the science fiction novels Idlewild, Edenborn, and Ever, Ever Free, and wrote the scripts for Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Voyage. Alternately, name the kid's parents. And yes, that's a, if you don't know the kid's name, you need to name both parents. I'm breaking a rule, sort of, but there's a reason. You're actually, you're really breaking a rule. Number nine. Well, it, it's kind of like, you know, if you name the, the, the comedy duo Abbott and Costello, you know, that's kind of, they go together. So All number right. nine. Good point. Good point. The first humans to orbit the moon were on this mission. And number 10. One more time, Carl, please. Uh, <laughs> this spacecraft was the first to prefer, perform a soft landing on Mars. It touched down on December 2nd, 1971. Unfortunately, it failed just 110 seconds later, having transmitted only a gray image with no details. It would not be until missions carried out in 1976 that the totally successful landings were accomplished. Name the 71 lander. 
Leonard is going to be sorry he missed tonight. Okay, any questions? Go to your round. We'll see how you did. That was, it looked difficult. Um, the last time we did this category, the scores were seven, 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 eight, and eight. I'm not thinking you guys did that good this time. No, all nines. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Number one. I guess I should put these in the chat. Chat, chat, chat. Number one is I will accept two answers because several people flew to the moon multiple times. No one has walked on the moon more than once. But um, so it might not have been too clear. But it in was fact, clear. Okay. It was very clear. There were 24 individual human beings and uh, 27 trips. Uh -huh. Said how many people? 24 people. All right. So, yeah, I, I heard speculation about, well, what's low Earth orbit? Is the space station? Yeah, everything's low Earth orbit unless you're talking about geosynchronous. And we had, don't have the technology to put any humans in orbit in geosynchronous, nor would there be a purpose. So they either have been in low Earth orbit or they fly to the moon. So it would be oh, right. either or proposition. And no other country has done it. Only uh, Americans have left low Earth orbit to go to the moon so far. I Take that metric that system. <laughs> yeah that's why so i heard people get close on number two about the author it was not isaac Azimov. it was author c clark um, there we go yep. uh, that makes sense and uh for number three the name of the last shuttle orbiter launched uh, this has a um a connection to one of the answers from the last round it is atlantis Hey, got it. Mm. The uh, first American space station, which crashed into Australia, by the way, when it was done, was oh, I put the uh, I put the question. You don't need that. Was Skylab? Yay! Oh, we were close. We it were was, close. <laughs> it was supposed to be up for longer than that, but they didn't quite reach the orbit they intended, and the space shuttle was supposed to be able to boost it, and it was. Way delayed. Thank you. Number five, uh, Tian Gong, if that's how you say it, translates into English as not Sky Lab, but Sky Palace. Mm. Oh, of course. <laughs> Did we get that? Yes. I, no. I don't think so. Is that what we finally settled on? That's what we settled on. <laughs> or Heavenly Palace. Great. Yeah. Number. Holy cow. Seven. Thank you for a castle, Kevin. So do we allow do we allow Heavenly Palace? <laughs> the, the translation I saw was sky. So, uh, I don't know. Knowing what I know about translation, mm -hmm. I I I lean toward considering that mm, a decent right. translation. All right. I'm surprised if you got palace, we'll go with that. All right. All right. Palace up in the sky. All right. Number this was uh let's see, what are we doing now? Number six. So number six, uh, probably, actually, this person is mo more mm, the next well-known astronaut than Neil Armstrong because he was last. And I don't know if people didn't get this. was Eugene Cernan. Okay. Oh, man. And for people who wasn't clear about, he was um, not the commander. So he, he stepped off of the lunar module on that mission, the second to the commander. And then he followed him up the ladder. So therefore, he was the last person on the way. Uh, number seven was very recent. New mm -hmm. Horizons sounds like a uh, a place at Disney World. <laughs> so number eight, I learned about this just by looking for these trivia questions. I had no idea this was uh, Carl Sagan's uh, son. Um, hey. Name is Nick. <laughs> we got one. We well, got one. <laughs> now wait a minute. Unless you got his the, the his mother. Oh, yeah. Who'd you put for the mother? Yeah. Uh, and Ryan, there, however nope. you say it. Nope, sorry. Second wife, Linda Salzman. Oh, come oh, on. I'm glad I put his name and not his parents. No, that's why, because I knew everyone was going to get Carl. So it's like, you got to get his mother right. So you're really wanting us to be, get a nice Punch and Judy score. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Number. We love, we love you. <laughs> number nine 
it, I, I, I've, I've heard that hello from the people so many times that I had no idea. That it was, it was, um, Wait, did, did we have to get the person's first name? Yeah, Nick, Nicholas, Nick. Nick. Nick Sagan. Uh, 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 Eugene. Well, number nine. Uh, so the first humans to orbit the moon, and this might have helped with the, the total count one, um, were Apollo 8. And by the way, the count of the individuals was Apollo 8 was first, three people. So each time it's three people. Uh, 10, which was the practice landing, they all but landed, three people. 13, uh, the failed mission, three people. And then there were, there were six successful landings, all 18. So it's 18, three, three, and three. Like that's how you get 27. And as I said, three of those people were repeats. What happened to Apollo 9? That, that was an Earth orbit practice. Yep. It was a complete rendezvous. They used a lunar module, but it was an Earth orbit. Yep. So they did not leave low Earth orbit. And uh, number 10, I don't know how you say this in Russian, but it doesn't matter. In English, it is the uh, Mars 3. It's a Mars 3 lander. Mm -hmm. oh. They had two failures, Mars 1 to 2, and then 3. Sort of a success. Got one gray image picture. I don't know if that was worth all the money. But... So, oh, team. I would like to come say something about Gong. We were talking about Gong in uh, our room. Uh -huh. So Gong is a very common last name, meaning Lord, very old, uh, long, but also as a noun, Gong also means palace, place for recreation, and uterus. So you can see how both of those, <laughs> those have something common. Oh, place for recreation. My uterus and would have uterus. been an acceptable answer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the recreation or, palace. Or, or anybody or, in or like call it a womb with a view. Sorry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, Susan. They just demonetized this video. The window. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's hear the scores. Starting oh, with we Deborah's to? new team. No, we don't want to know. <laughs> we, well, we didn't have a score, so that's easy. That's <laughs> easy. That just zero. leave that one blank. <laughs> Uh, we were close. seriously was we were it a close on really one. Zero. <laughs> well i i my my brain i had a brain fart because i said space lab instead of sky lab because i must have been thinking of space lab regular one from uh the rattle oh, no. sky lab. oh there you go so that I one was, was totally ben, i was sure you were gonna get at least oh, wow right, i was gonna say while i, I and need Judy. to get back into my space trivia i used to know a lot more and i've since forgotten it for us anyway retain it unless i keep up with it uh, how long can we go? How low can we go? Empty eight. eight. Uh, not a punch please. and Judy. Not punch and Judy. Everybody, everybody, punch, and Judy yeah. punch and Judy for us. Punch and Judy for us. All right. And now we have two teams tied with eight. Let's go with fight record. High temperature switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You got a 10 total. Oh. After you add in the two we've got for this round. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, total. Yeah. After, we got a 10 total after you add in the two we got for this round. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 Thanks, Kyle. Your team made us feel better. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> Our name is anything but KKK. Well, I'm a little surprised we actually got 10. I'm not surprised. Oh, I'm not surprised. Okay. We, I, we I am because reasoned number... our way into one answer. The, the, we guessed on the Sky Palace. That's we, wow. I knew we had nine because Kyle got nine, and then and then we just guessed on the last one, and I can't believe it was we was almost going to say Sky Castle, and oh, Aaron said Pal Palace is a better word than Castle. I said, yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's do, take do a picture. One question on picture your low or Earth orbit when they sent the scuttle out to repair the Hubble. Not, that that's still low Earth orbit. beyond low Earth orbit. No, sorry, low but Earth orbit. The, the Hubble was in low Earth orbit. Okay. All right. <laughs> Very nice, <Carolyn>. Janine. <laughs> okay, who's taking Aww. a picture? Who's got the tech to take a picture for Susan? <laughs> or I'll just sit in here. I didn't know you were doing science. Uh, I can do that. Hold on a second. All right, everyone hold up your signs. 
Karen, I can't see it's a, at a weird angle. Ben and Jordan, I can't see yours. Hold it higher, so Karen, and twist, turn it a little bit. You must be able to look over the top of it. All right. Uh, okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> as trivia. <laughs> All right. Let's. All right, five minute break before right, round right. three and something totally different from those two. Good. good. Thank you, Rob. Oh, yay. <laughs> that was good. That was good. You see, in my lower left is the hint for this one. So you see lower left? Something about TV. Uh oh. No, lower left. Lower left. left oh, I can't. Left. Oh, is that money? money? Mm. It's money. Uh, looks like American money, though. So I don't know anything about American money. <laughs> All right, five minutes. <laughs> Going back to Rob's country, Rob, I'm going to post a couple of videos in the chat. If you're interested in country music. I thought some of those song titles sounded like interesting songs, but I didn't think that the vi the video clips sounded all that interest all that intriguing. I I'm not a big fan of new country. I like the old stuff better. Yeah, I'm interested in old old, old country stuff, from yeah. kind of like an ethnomusicology perspective. I'm interested in old country music, traditional. Yeah, Patsy Cline, Hank Williams. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like Willie Nelson a lot. I do too. I like uh, Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I do like Brad Paisley because my wife really got into it and I started going to the concerts with her. He's really good. He's an excellent guitarist. I've heard of him, but I don't know who he is. Yeah, he sings a song called Alcohol. And it's the words he, are very, are very. He, I'm sorry. The words are very entertaining. Yeah, what you can say? <laughs> Was he one of the people tonight? Yes, Tex. He's one that does the song called Tex. Oh, that, that was disgusting. Yeah, I, it's, I, I want to check you for ticks. <laughs> that was yeah, horrible. It's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. But he does a couple songs like that. He does a song called Water, where he go, just goes out in boats, and he's got, like, all these different uh, people swimming. And there's some famous woman. She wasn't famous at the time. But it's, it's not Lady Gaga, but it's somebody like that who was in his video, and now she's more famous doing something you know she's like a model or something like that she was in one of his videos and so he plays a lot of the videos in the background at his concert he has like um uh, a song called waiting on a woman which is pretty cool and it's um andy griffin sitting there talking to him on a, um on a park bench you know and he's like talking to him and he says what are you doing he's waiting on a woman and it's always about why his girl's getting ready to go out for a date. He's always waiting. And it just it was like, it's like a love song, like how the, every every guy is always waiting on a woman. It's, he's pretty clever. The song Alcohol was a real big hit with the college students. You know, it's like, it's just some of the lyrics are really clever. You know, it's like uh, drinking alcohol. It's It's the reason white people dance and all this kind of stuff. It's just really funny. He's pretty good. No, I don't. I don't really care for country music. Except yeah, the ones we don't like is like Florida Georgia Line. Oh, they're horrible. All these new people, oh, horrible. I saw one guy. He was okay. He was a good performer. I forgot his name, but he sings a song called "Getting Drunk on a Plane." It's like it's pretty funny. At the end of his show, the whole stage turned opened up in a big giant plane, the front end of a plane came out on stage i was like what the hell where'd that come from and he was like a pilot he and the whole crew got out of it and i was like wow that they hit that pretty well <laughs> dirks bentley that was the guy's name there's another guy named eric church he's really good he's he's kind of new he's been around well he's been around for a few years but he's a new country style he's pretty good 
I also always assume that they're all very conservative and some of them um, are, yeah, yeah, racist and yeah, some of them are. Yeah. Uh, Miranda Lambert is my wife's favorite, and she's really good. She's very talented. She writes her own songs and stuff. Yeah, I could not believe that one song. That oh, the country stuff. Uh, Hank Williams Jr. Oh, song. I could not believe that. I, I I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they could get away with playing that on the air. Yeah, it's just horrible. He's the guy who used to do Monday Night Football. Yeah, they they dropped his song on I Monday Night Football when he made some very racist comments about Obama. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. He lost his job. He's the one who used to say, "Are you ready for some football?" Yeah, yeah I know. Came I a know very, very good song, uh, you know, intro for that show, and then he screwed it all up because with his, with his, with his politics and his beliefs. I didn't know that about he... politics as much as I care about his, his beliefs. Yeah. Outright racism. Yeah, yeah, his his beliefs. That was pretty. That was pretty blatant. I I never heard of a song like that. <laughs> I don't even know what the rest of the words are. I don't, I don't care. I'm not mm -hmm. going to give them any. And, and the funny thing was, when I was younger, uh, one of my friends was a, a, a band and they do, um, I forget what they call it, like impersonations of other people. So he was doing mm -hmm. Elvis. Somebody else was doing Patsy Cline. And they asked me if I wanted to do Hank Williams Jr. because they thought I looked like him. I was like, I don't sing and I don't know his stuff. They said, well, you just have to learn it and stand there and fake play guitar. I said, no, not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I said, I, the only thing I could do is scream, are you ready for some football? And that's it. <laughs> but I, I don't think I look like him, but my friend thought I did if I darkened my hair a little. I don't really, I, know, I don't know what he looks like or anything, but didn't he get like burned up or cut up or something in a car crash when he was like young or something? And then he grew a beard to cover. Yeah, that? probably. Probably. Because he's an alcoholic. Or he was. Rough looking dude. When he was young. Yeah. I remember as a kid being yelled at for listening to heavy metal and their terrible lyrics. And then you think of this and you're like, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, really. Those, those guys look like angels now. Oh, God. Oh, the other one that went too far and ruined his career is Kid Rock. He's just an idiot. Oh, oh God. God. He went completely. He, he went yeah. over the edge because he could have just shut his mouth and kept singing because he started getting popular when he did duets with, um, he did that song, the duet. Oh, with Cheryl Crow. Yes. Yeah. And that was so good. And everybody was did the karaoke. And then, he uh, just you know, nuts. Trump became president and a lot of people felt, oh, now I can be racist out in front of everyone now. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Trump is Trump brought it out. You know, I mean, I always when change. They just became more comfortable with being out and open. That's right. It's still it's still like that. Yeah, it's still like that. Well, just going back to we had a discussion about fireworks and, you know, so they finally allowed safe and sane, which <laughs> they're not. But um, they allowed safe and sane in our county because people were buying them in Sacramento anyway. And they still shoot off the illegal ones. And this year it was so much more than normal. I mean, everybody, not just in my neighborhood, but everybody was talking about it on next door and stuff. It's like, what is going on this year? And it is. These people are just F you. That's that's their whole attitude is F you. And they're just these things, they're down. just explosives. They're not yeah. even like something pretty it's just like explosives yeah. explosives to be as annoying and rude as humanly possible and so, if it's like oh you don't like the governor um he's not here so why you know seth andrew's dog is terrified of fireworks and he posted a a photo of uh so like the dog, the dog with a big sign in front of him uh dogs against fireworks it's very cute yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's get back to the agenda and let's see. Who's here that might have an announcement? Uh, Kyle. Hey, hey, yeah, this week on Data Skeptic, keeping up my theme of talking about artificial general intelligence with an OG deep theoretician this week called computational AGI. So a little bit hairy and thick in the woods, but we get into what super intelligence might be and how to mathematically model it. That's this week on Data Skeptic. Mm, wow, sounds like a Trek episode. 
Cool. Close to it, yeah. Cool. Uh, Adrian, you have anything to say to represent uh, either the Skeptic Zone or your own activities? Sure, yeah. So the Skeptic Zone podcast, I am not on it this week. Oh, so you get a what? break. <laughs> what? How'd that happen? I know. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, no, I'm not. I, I, I'm not on it. Next week, I'll be doing the newsletter. So I'll be back on. And I've also done three interviews because I've had a lot of company here. And from three different continents, three different countries. Yeah, I had Craig Shear, and I think I announced that last week that Craig Shear was with me and Susan Shear and Faith and Romero. So Craig and Susan were from New Zealand. And last night I met up with Andres, and I've, I'm going to mess his last name or his name from the ESP. <laughs> podcast, <laughs> the European Skeptics Podcast. And we met for dinner out in Canmore. I drove out, it's about an hour away from here. What's he doing here? He is a tour guide. That's what he does with his real day job. And so he had 42, isn't that awesome? 42 passengers from Hungary. And they landed, I believe it was in Toronto. And then they go to Quebec City, Montreal, Montreal. Montreal. On Ottawa, and then they hop on a plane. Oh, the Niagara Falls, I forgot. Then they go come here to Cal. They land in Calgary and then drive to the mountains. So when he was staying in Canmore, so I just drove out to Canmore. We had dinner last night, and he interviewed me, and I interviewed him. So hmm. you'll get to hear him on the Skeptic Zone as well. I wonder awesome. if they ever covered uh, what was called tour guide woo on the Square. Oh, the we talk about that. Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> he says that. that's one of his really big pet peeves cool <laughs> anybody yeah. else tour guide what woo as in people tell you all about something about the area but it's it's folklore it's, it's not just real. made up yeah and they state it like it's a fact yeah 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 one one of the co-hosts on swearing the strange uh in his youth was a tour guide so it was an episode where he talked about you know what what happened and you know when he was young that he saw that going on okay who's that kid rock yep oh, man. <laughs> any other announcements all right my thing is that the first interview of this season to promote psycon was published the other day with melanie Teresa king because she's going to be a speaker this year. She was a Sunday paper speaker, and now she's going to be on the main stage. And it was a, she's always fun to talk to. It was a fascinating uh, interview, only about a half hour long. So if you'd like to read that little article or watch the video attached, uh, there it goes. Yeah, she was on Seth Andrews again. She's so uh, good. That was really good, too. I Wasn't that good? Yeah, yeah. This they so hooked good. up with that one. They, they, they were talking about something, not specifically her work, but I guess he he thought you know her opinion would be interesting on the subject. So he got got with her, which was cool. Okay, we're ready for round three. So this is totally different. And uh, I think this is going to be you either know it or you don't know it. So it might go very quickly. And, <laughs> and what I want to know is, <laughs> tell me the person depicted on these U.S. currency denominations. Ooh, that's great. Well, what about Canada? Come on. Sorry, <laughs> you could do that one. And that'll be a big punch and Judy. Great. Uh, <laughs> Number Rats one is a Canadians. nickel. Number two is a dime. Number three is half a oh, dollar. Geez. Four is a two dollar bill. Five is a ten dollar bill. Six is the fifty dollar bill. Seven is one hundred. Eight is five hundred. Nine is a thousand. And ten is the five thousand dollar bill. Yes. So, so, like so is, is you, are you asking for the person who is in the most recently issued version? Because some of these might have more than one correct answer. Well, we'll have to we'll have to argue about that if that's the case because that's not what I saw when I looked these up. Hmm. Hmm. Okay then. If if you come up with a different answer uh, afterwards, come back and give me a citation, and we'll. Look. I can tell you the half dollar right away has had at least two yeah. different actual people on it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I was growing up, it was one thing, and then later it was a different yep. commemorative. Okay, that didn't get, uh, wasn't in anything I read, but I buy that. Okay, so go to your rooms. Okay, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, better, better than the space, space travel stuff? Yeah, better than space travel. Yeah. 
All right, for this one, I'm going to share my screen. Not great, but better than that. <laughs> yeah, not. Um, okay, so for the coins, we'll go through that quick. That was uh, Nicholas Thomas Jefferson. The dime is FDR. Half dollar John F. Kennedy. And who else did people come up with for ben that? Franklin. Benjamin Franklin <laughs> was before Kennedy. Oh. Uh, and Mercury was before FDR. Mercury. Oh. Technically, winged liberty. Yeah. Mercury. Oh, liberty. No. Liberty had. Dime. Not actually Mercury. On the dime, it was Mercury. No, not according to the <sighs> Treasury Department. It looks like Mercury, but it is not considered Liberty. Uh, mercury. Mm. It is referred to as a Mercury. Oh, mercury yeah, but well, it's it, they call yeah, it the that, same way the nickel is referred to a nickel, but it's not a nickel. It's a five cent. It, piece. It's a Liberty. Liberty head dime. And the penny is a cent. That's before. All right, let's get to the bills. So. <laughs> we're, gonna get, we're gonna get every. I didn't want to put a one dollar bill. That would just be two dollars. No, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, Thomas Jefferson. Oh, mm. yeah. Going sure. to the ten. It's Alexander Hamilton. Uh, and then we go to Ulysses S. Grant on the fifty. Hundred dollar bill is of course a Benjamin. I hope everybody. Thank you. Work. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. The first time I got numbers. that version of the hundred dollar bill, it'd been a really long time since I'd had a hundred dollar bill, and I laughed. I thought that like someone was trying to play <laughs> me, and they said, "No, no, this is really the way. This is the new one." <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, the, yeah, the new All ones right. have a big blank spot on it. I thought it was yeah. I thought I'd get a counterfeit bill too. So beyond this, I have never seen one of these bills, but the five hundred dollar bill is William McKinley. Oh, McKinley! They took the mountain away from him, but he still got the five hundred dollar bill. So this was discontinued in nineteen sixty nine. So I guess he still doesn't have the bill. It was last printed in nineteen forty five. Same goes for the next two. The one thousand is Grover Cleveland. Oh, that's the oh, that's the oh shit, Grover Cleveland. And the five thousand, I heard people get this wrong. It's James Madison. Oh, oh, wow. I heard this oh, name brought. That's the $10,000 bill, Samuel. Ah, oh, that's where he came in. So I will you put those was, in, the, in the... Madison. Put them uh, in the chat so I, we have them in the order. I am going to put them in the chat. What about... Is that where it stops? There's no 100000 That was it. Yeah, there is. That's a, that's well, a candy see. bar. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Oh, no, no, sorry. We're going Wilson. Wilson. Well, that's where Wilson ended up. <laughs> yeah, those, yeah. those were never released for circulation. The hundred. Right, 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 right. That's why. It's, that's why. Store up bank deposits in the, the depression. Yeah, only people like yeah. Trump saw that. That's why I didn't uh, put that there. Okay, uh, chat, 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 chat. Let's see, chat. Here are the answers, one to ten. Oh, okay. Okay, let's get the scores. Uh, Find out where I have that file. Yes. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Run. I see Have it. Have you seen I this see trick? It. Oh, I'll do it later. Ringtail cat. Yeah. Okay. Starting with, oh my God, two points, Bernard and the woolly mammoths. You want to say? Five out of 10. We're five. improving. We're better. We're, we're improving. We actually have five points. Thanks, okay. Jordan. Mm, how low? Can you go, MT? What, ha what happened to the fight record high? Hmm. Well, anyways, we got nine. Oh, you're right. I missed one. Okay, so fight record high temperatures. Six. Ah, we need two to tie. Our name is anything but KKK. Ten. Ten. <laughs> Quite better than two. Quite a spread here. Much better average than we've had in the other rounds. But yeah, but that spread. wasn't, I mean, our Canadian friends. Come on. <laughs> Susan said she wants it spread. You're doing it. <laughs> I'll show you guys a quick trick. Have you seen the bill? You fold it from his eye to his mouth and then the other side the same way. And then you kind of make a V out of it. And that then when you tip it this way, he's happy. You tip it this way, he's sad. <laughs> and it works with all the bills. It's really cool. It's a cool illusion. It doesn't have really you, show too well here. Though. Have you seen the conspiracy trick of how you can fold the twenty dollar bill to make the twin towers on fire in the back? Of the yeah, it's bill? Ooh, that's and it bad. says yeah. United, like United Airlines. Yeah. A twenty dollar bill. Yeah, you fold it like just right. I can remember how to do that. 
Yeah, I've seen it online. I never did it myself. Yeah, I've seen it. I have it, one. It says American and United or something like that. And it's like the flight names and all this kind of all stuff. Right, look that up on YouTube, Karen, later. <laughs> round, there, round there's pretty. also a trick you can do with a, 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 a Land O'Lakes box of butter. Oh, yeah, I've seen that too. <laughs> yeah, that's Not fun. anymore because they took the lady off. Yeah. Right. So, Carolyn, oh, yeah. here. I'm oh, surprised. Yeah. You're staying for this round too, Carolyn? Cool. For this round, yeah. It's not nine o'clock yet. So, cool. We're going along fast. Okay. So, this is uh, different from the others, but something like I've done before. In fact, just two weeks ago, I did TV Hangouts. This is more TV Hangouts. Given the Hangout spot, name the TV series in which each prominently appeared. Okay, number one is Central Perk. And, and what is it that we name? What's the thing we have to name? The TV show. show. This is show. highlighted. Yeah. Thank you. This was the hangout. In. Number two, the Central long... Park or Perk? Central Perk. Number two, the Long Branch Saloon. Number three, Somebody who reads Spanish, please read that. Los Pollos, Los Pollos hermanos. hermanos. Gracias. Number four, Patty's Irish Pub. <laughs> Number five, The Bada Bing. Hmm. Number six, The Drunken Clam. <laughs> Number seven. I like that one. Number seven. The Lanford Lunchbox, a little bit of a, sort of alliteration. Number eight, The Peach Pit. Uh -huh. mm. Number nine, The Regal Beagle. Oh. And number 10, The Tropicana. When I did coins before, I made a Gerbic. Yeah, that was so oh. cool. Oh, that's yeah. great! Oh, that's cool. You you need a you need a lot of those to buy anything. Oh, oh. Queen of Wiki, the Gerbic, oh. one Gerbic. Okay, go to your rooms. So more TV hangouts. All right, number one, Central Perk, a clear uh, homage to Central Park, which is where it was uh, essentially down the block, and that is Friends. Which, by the way, let me uh, stop share. And I just got this pushed at me by either Facebook or Instagram today. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a fairly new thing. Let's see, share screen. Yes, if you really love this series, you can go into their apartment, take pictures. You can go to Central Park and take pictures. And and even the famous couch. It's all over the world. New York, Brussels, Long Beach, Detroit, Birmingham. Decades, decades later there is a huge fan base enough to do this apparently there's their apartment mm. i looked so at how the... is it in all these stores it's just a replica what in all these different cities how is it in all these yeah they built replicas of the oh that's of the set, of the set. <laughs> they won't get my money <laughs> it's a, it's, I, I think it was about 40 bucks for a ticket and about the same if you want the photo package that they'll officially take pictures no. of. But you could take your own picture. So fifty yeah. dollars, something like that. Okay, sharing back with the PowerPoint slides. Okay, number two was the Long Brand Saloon, which is in Dodge City, and that is Gunsmoke. All right. Yeah. <laughs> number three, the one I can't, I can't say, but that is a Breaking Bad. Yeah. Number four, so. couldn't get a really good establishing shot of that. Yeah. It wasn't blurry, but anyway, Patty, this is it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, uh, all right, uh, 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 one of the show I never watched. We got a good job. I never heard yeah. of that show. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's good job. I've heard good things. Uh, the yeah, bottom bing is uh, yeah. the Sopranos. Yeah. I had a one for the Sopranos last time. Apparently, they had a restaurant and a bar that was frequent hangouts. <laughs> The drunken clam. Uh, I couldn't get the gift to work, but it, and, and that that's actually a clam drinking on the every time they show it. And it's in Rhode Island. Island. There's a bottle in. That's Family Guy. 
So this is an and oldie. The Langford lunchbox was from Roseanne. Uh, no wonder I didn't well, know. Yeah, no wonder I've never. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Number eight, the uh, famous peach pit from, as you can see the sign in the upper right there, Beverly Hills 902. That was a box doll. Oh. That was a doll box thing you had there. What's that? Well, that was a dollhouse. Yeah, I don't know. You could, it <laughs> could not find a reasonable shot inside that you could really see what it looked like. But yeah, very observant. Uh, yes, this is a number nine, the Regal Beagle. And those are the main stars. Mm. That is Three's Company. Okay. And finally, Ricky Ricardo and his orchestra oh. appearing at the oh. Tropicana. Oh. I love Lucy. Very cool. All right. Hopefully that was not as difficult as the previous ones were. All right, let's get the scores. That was a fun one. That was fun. Did you like that? All right, let's start with oh, Bernard and the Woolly Mammoths. Six out of 10. <laughs> we're increasing. We're improving. Yeah. Oh, surely. All right, fight record high temps. And. Is this is not is enough. <laughs> yeah. Did you say 10? Realsy. Yes, yep. I did. For real this time. For real. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, good improvement. Uh, how low can MTG go? Nine. Yeah, enough to keep the lead. <laughs> is it? Is it? Our you can't go below the average, apparently. Nine. What was that? Nine. Okay, significantly better scores. So you're putting my brother on Susan's team? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're losing Carolyn, aren't we? Yep, we're losing me. Yeah, but the rule is... Sorry. You're in charge. We're not Rob. in the Willie Mammoth. <laughs> well, if they get a perfect 10 and everybody else gets a zero... What would happen? Not much. Still be in last place. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh man. All right. In last place by less points. We should let them double their their. <laughs> they call it like wagers now. Je but Jeopardy. There's been <laughs> flexibility. People have chosen the name they like. They're for, they've been excited. If they get a ten, they get for, twenty. For so entertainment I, purposes only. No wagering. Uh, can, I ask a quick, a quick, can I ask a quick question of you guys? Yes, uh, because, since you're so far ahead, uh, ahead here in time and everything, I got an invitation to for tickets to some guys in the city. Um, does do these names mean anything to you guys? Anka and Luca, world champion mind readers. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize there was a championship. World championship in that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Night, guys. Yeah. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Joining us today. Part of the team. The it was week. fun. Bye, bye. Might be good to go, Alan. Just <laughs> for a while. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Maybe. Okay. What is the bonus going to be? Take a guess from the middle of my panel there. Something to do with Alan John. Is that the time machine? What? Uh, Elton John? <laughs> My eyes are bad. It looks like Elton John sitting at a piano. It's that, yeah, that's the time machine. Something to okay. do with a very, very small image. <laughs> well, yeah, if you pin it, let's a see. A French Spot, horn player? Spotlight for everybody. Oh, it's there. not Elton John. Did you look in? It's a time machine. It's, it's the, the time, time machine. machine. It's Rod Taylor. It's the time machine. The time machine. Okay, but it's, it's not awesome. about the time machine. It is... All time. Da, da, da. This is going to be the yeah. highest grossing time travel movies of all time. Oh, Susan's favorite. Susan, That's right. I can't believe you well missed done, it. Rob. Well so, done. Name the 10 top highest grossing time travel movies, top lifetime grosses worldwide, according to Box Office. Wow. Yeah. New on Spotlight. I mean, there I, have been. There I think been you got to. I don't know. There's no way to say stop your spotlight. Just put, put do gallery. Just pick the gallery view. I don't know how else to do that. Yeah. It's weird. There's nothing that says, is there a remove spotlight? Maybe there is. Yeah. Okay. Yes, there is a remove spotlight. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So that should be pretty clear. It's worldwide, top grossing box office. 
not DVD sales, talking about box office. And uh, there you go. Go to your rooms. Oh, you mean I got to work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, and we're doing mono rules. What? No, 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 no. What about franchise entries? Could they be individuals? Don't talk. What? <laughs> well, no, it's a valid question, but I'm not sure I understood it. Say it again. So, the history of the world's part one and two, could those be two entries? Was there a part two? Yeah, it was just, a TV just came show. out. It was yeah, a TV, TV show. show though. Oh, seriously, so, I have so. to watch that. But yeah, no, that would be individual. Yeah. That would be, yeah, it's a series. Okay, that'd be two. Yeah. That would be two. It's All right, nice. but yeah, I, good luck putting those down because I, I don't think it was time travel. At least one. No, it wasn't time travel. No. Okay. Good luck. Okay, so here we go. Highest grossing time travel movies ever, according to Box Office Mojo. So, and number ten is Twelve Monkeys. Ooh. Anybody get that? Yep. And, ooh, very good. One hundred sixty. Never even heard of it. Million dollars. Forgot that was time travel. Yeah. Looper. I heard somebody mention it. I don't know if they put it down. Uh, is number nine. Uh, Darn it, you put it on there. Oh, 176. Well. Number eight. Two one, Bruce Wills films. One I have not seen. Deja vu. I oh, put that on my I list. Saw that, I've I heard of that too. Well. I didn't think it was big money. Huh. And number seven is the second one on the list of ten I didn't see. Tenet. Yay. Never heard of that one. Carl. <laughs> it's tremendous. It's, Number six, everybody put arguable. this down. Back to the Future, the first and original. Buddy. <laughs> we send you back to the future. Number <laughs> five is the second Terminator film, which I did my uh, category about last time. Number four. Interstellar. Uh, uh, mm, such a terrible movie. Getting upwards of close to a billion there. It's amazing how much these can make. It says Next. it says it can see it, it has every science fiction uh gimmick conceivable. <laughs> <laughs> X-Men Days of Future Past. I like that one. 746 million. And the number two spot. I didn't actually remember this concern time travel at all, frankly, and I saw it. Deadpool 2. Oh, Deadpool. Oh. $185 million. Wow, I totally forgot that had time travel in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. And number Good one. You, Carl. <laughs> I think everybody put number one down. Deadpool. Avengers Endgame. $2.8 billion with a B. That's unbelievable. That's wow. unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll put the list in. Uh, let's see. Can I do that? We, we did badly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we are keeping up our record. Mm. <laughs> did you put Alan on my team and didn't tell me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got to do some magic here. I can't put this in the chat otherwise. People need it in the chat or did you get that? I'm no fine. Oh, just, that just, is nice if you have it. Handy. Yeah, it'll take me a second. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's annoying. It's always good to have it. Okay. So here we go. Here's the list coming up in chat. I'm good. There we go. Okay. And uh, give you the URL if anyone wants to look at that in more detail to see if they want to watch any of those movies. Screen ramp. Okay, so we'll go to take our final scores of the evening. Let me get back to, now I know why Susan has two monitors. This is not so easy with one monitor. Gotta say, share screen now. Bob, it looks like you're wearing a wizard's hat. Yeah. Nope, that's not right. <clears throat> there we go okay so there's one team in striking distance of the leading team right now but let's start with 
Team in last place, see if you uh, improved your score. Bernard and Holy <laughs> Mammoth. We went in the reverse direction. Um, three out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, we had three. Yeah, we were trying to stay in the teens, you know, just because that's that's what we were. <laughs> Sweet, 16. Sweet sixteen. Sweet sixteen. That's right. All right. Fight record high temps. Three. <laughs> How low can you go? We were in striking distance, and we struck out three. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> All really? right. Oh my goodness. Did you get a negative four? <laughs> Our names anything from KKK? Mm -hmm. A positive seven. Very good. <laughs> Quite a commanding lead, 10 point lead. Very good, all. But especially our name is anything but KKK. <sighs> all right. Well, not a high scoring round. Susan should be pleased when she watches this. Yeah. She's yeah she likes those low scores. You did it. She, she likes those low scores. <laughs> yep. It was, she actually, was a widespread. We definitely had that. It was actually, let's see, uh, the average was eight points lower than last week. But but four weeks ago, we had a, a lower score of 30.2. Oh, also <laughs> all categories by me. What are you doing to us, Rob? Come on, man. Yeah, that's just, that's just following Kevin. instructions by Susan. Don't make it do on uh, the on the plus side, though. Good night, it's everybody. Only nine thirty here. Good night, so Gail. Gail. That's good night. night. Not even midnight here. Not yes, even midnight yes. there. It's twelve twenty-eight. I'm glad that I'm glad we did it quickly at least. Thank uh, you, Rob. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, it was good. Thank you, Susan. Rob. We missed you, and Rob held down the fort. Come back, Susan. Yeah, Rob. You want to share? You want to? Uh, Jordan made a synopsis of our of our evening. Wait, wait. I have to share it. I can't see it. Uh, okay. Spotlight, spotlight. Where's the spotlight? Spotlight. There you go. <laughs> no! in, including, That's our, awesome. including our team mascot, Bernard. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. you all wear glasses. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> uh, Jordan noted right. that. So, uh, That's really that good. cool. You yeah. said it was done, random. Jordan. How could they all have glasses? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, consider no, Bernard didn't have glasses. Though, yeah, I think I think there was something. Uh, very good. Very good. Nice. Maybe he needs a checkup. Yeah. Possibly. Possibly. Uh, all right. Good night, all. See you all right. Good night. Thanks, Rob. Good night, everyone. Bye. All right. Tomorrow, everyone. <laughs> Bye, Susan. Tomorrow, Deborah. See ya. Bye, <laughs>